You have the outer layer, which is called the capsule. And just inside the capsule is called the cortex. And deep to the cortex is the medulla. So you have those three areas of the kidney capsule, cortex, and medulla. Now this area here where you have the renal artery, renal vein, and the ureter entering, these vessels entering, and the ureter exiting the kidney, this is called the hilus, this indentation. The blood enters through the uh, renal artery and enters into the segmental artery here. That segmental artery divides and enters between the pyramids in the renal columns. Renal column here, 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 everywhere between a pyramid is called a renal column. These are the pyramids, which is where you find the functional unit of the kidney, the nephron, and in between them is the column. So from the segmental artery, you have the interlobar, which comes up and crosses over the pyramid, and that becomes the arcuate artery, the arcuate artery coursing over the pyramid. It leaves the arcuate artery to become the interlobular artery here, and subsequently the afferent arterial. So if we move from here, this here, this is an enlargement of this. Do you see it? These are the Bowman's capsules. This is the arcuate artery here coursing over the pyramid. And then you have the interlobular artery giving rise to the afferent arterial. Again, this is an enlargement of this. This is the afferent arterial. This is the efferent arterial. This is the glomerulus or vascular tuft. Its outer layer is called the visceral layer. Between the visceral layer and Bowman's capsule is the intracapsular space. And this layer here inside Bowman's capsule is called the parietal layer. Here you have the proximal convoluted tubule. Here you have the distal convoluted tubule. Again, afferent arterial, efferent arterial, macula densa cells, and juxtaglomerular cells here that produce renin. I don't think I, I don't think I left anything out. I think I actually covered. Oh no, I'm not done yet. All right. So, getting back to the renal. Pyramids, once urine is formed in the nephron, it enters into the minor calyx. These are minor calyxes here, 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 here. Here's one that's open. These two minor calyx join to form a major calyx, and these major calyxes enter into the renal pelvis and subsequently into the ureta. And from the ureta, here's the ureta entering out through the hilus traveling down towards the bladder, entering into the bladder posteriorly here, and they open up into the bladder at the urinal openings here and here. Now this change in lining is called the trigome, and it's the relationship between the internal ureters and the um, sphincter muscle, the first sphincter muscle, the internal sphincter muscle of the bladder. Now this is the male model, this is the prostate gland, this is the internal sphincter muscle, this is the trigome. This folding over represents rugae and allows for expansion and recoiling of the bladder, which is essentially a compartment. Now I think I